Joining us now is Ojinika Ojio with stories trending around the world. Thank God it's Friday. TGIF. Hello, Jinix. My favorite day of the week. Yes. Good morning, Dr. Abati. How are you? I'm, good. I'm really excited this morning. Good morning, Rufai. Oh, gee, I'm excited. You know I'm excited. <laughs> yes. You know. Yes. We're going ah. to have a great weekend. Yes. Uh, well, all right. Bless, I hope bless, you all bless, have a bless. great weekend, too. Well, good morning to you, viewers. Let's begin what's trending. The President General of Ohane Zendigo Worldwide, Emmanuel Nguanyangu, on Thursday, appealed to the Lagos State Governor. Babajide Songwulu to intervene in the ongoing demolition of buildings in Lagos State, which he says affects a significant number of Igbo-owned properties in the state. Nguanyangu made the appeal at a press conference in Abuja, where the Igbo Social Cultural Group met with stakeholders to establish an Ohaneze relief agency to support Igbo citizens in distress and other Nigerians in need of help. Nguanyangu promised to meet with Songwulu to appeal for the suspension of the demolition exercise until all facts are cleared. I've been watching with friends some children crying. I have seen a, a political site where children came back from school, their home is being demolished, they were crying, they were shedding tears. I was moved as a human being, as a father. I know what is a comeback and see my children crying because they're now a few, a few hours before they had a home, now they are homeless. It's a very powerful thing. I'm investigating the matter. Any of our people who actually had a proper approval by, by the agency and who, whose home is being destroyed, Ohanese will stand by them to make sure that reparation is paid to them. And I pray if Tinibu take a position on this matter, this thing will change because as a governor of uh, Lagos State, we didn't have any problem. So I believe he, he, uh, that will help. Well, uh, Ohanese has called on uh, the president to weigh in on the matter, and I think he made a good point there, saying that this thing has been going on for years. I mean, we have heard from some citizens in Lagos saying that, you know, you know they've been having conversations with the Lagos State government about their demolition and you know now that is I mean now that is happening under a new administration it is quite worrisome but in the meantime one of the affected victims Henry Arizechi who is the chairman of King's Royal Estate in Festac has claimed that his home was demolished by the Zonal Southwest FHA Lagos and not by the Lagos State government Arizechi made the claim on our nightly news program Newsnight he further alleged that the FHA is involved in racketeering for the purpose of allocating land to the highest bidder and called on President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to weigh in on the matter. We are homeless. Some people are now in the hospital because of the trauma. Do you know that some of us were given only one hour in the wee hours of the night to vacate our houses. And if you refuse, they will throw jaggers in your room, in your houses. They don't even want to know whether there are newborn babies in that house. My windscreen, the windscreen of my car was got broken and the, I had a black eye because I asked them, why should they be here by this time? See, I want you to also know that there are another dimension to this matter. There are land racketeering in Lagos FHA here. I don't see the reason why a contravention bill will be issued to us and we are responding. We are paying. As I am talking to you, I have receipt of payments I made. I have contravention issued to us. But the Lagos FHA here turned a, a deaf ear. They are breaking those houses to give it to other, other people that may have paid or people they want to reallocate the land to. They are claiming that those people had that allocation donkey years ago. They have never proven that. Well, Arin Zechi has brought another dimension to Lagos demolition. You know, we've heard from, you know, the Commissioner of um, Water Resources, Tukumbo Wahab. He's talked about the fact that, you know, those people that built houses um, built it in contravention of the uh, laws. And well, however, in the meantime, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, 
In the 2023 elections, Peter Obi on Thursday faulted state governments carrying out demolition of buildings. Reacting through a now viral post on X, Obi said the demolition exercise is heaping more hardship on hapless citizens who are already battling with multi-dimensional poverty. The former number state governor added that now is not the time to embark on the, a demolition spree, given the prevailing economic hardship across the country. His tweet reads in part. Even if there were some violations, as the government are claiming, this critical time is not auspicious for such an exercise, knowing the hardship in the land and the consequences it will have on the poor who are struggling to make ends meet with their little resources. The poor in our midst who are putting their meager resources are going through very severe financial stress that should not be multiplied further. In some cases, the properties being demolished are the lifetime savings and retirement abodes of the aged and incapacitated. My appeal, therefore, is for the respective governments involved in this act to consider the hardship in the country and try to put a human face to their action. While we should enforce sensible regulations, all actions of the government must show compassion. I do agree with Peter B on this score fact that, you know, there is a poverty in the land. I believe that, you know, the government should show some compassion. Dr. Abati, I would like for you to weigh in on that uh, uh, gentleman who appeared on our nightly news program yesterday, where he accused the FHA of some sort of racketeering. Well, before now, there was another gentleman uh, whose story was reported, who said that four people died. His wife was in hospital. About three of his neighbors were already down with a stroke because their houses were demolished. I think this same FHA, uh, you know, housing estate. One thing that uh, the gentleman whose story you reported today has brought is to clarify that it's not, it's not the Lagos State government demolishing houses in certain parts of Lagos State. That is the Federal Housing Authority. And that there was ex an existing contravention bill for which they have been paying. Then th those houses were demolished in the dead of the night with families asked to move within one hour, otherwise the houses will be demolished. Now, which then takes us to the point made by Mr. Peter B, that these things should be done with a human face. Yes. At a time of serious hardship in the country, people cannot even feed themselves. The few who have managed to erect a building, you then go there and just pull it down. And what kind of blood flows in the veins of the man operating that uh, caterpillar, for example? I mean, are these human beings? Okay, because you work for government and uh, you can use government authority, you just go and practically kill other human beings. All those people who have died as a result of their houses being demolished, all those people who have ended up uh, with uh, a heart attack or stroke or are in hospital, I mean, that's uh, putting additional burden on people at a time of great hardship. And that, I think, is the point that Mr. B is making, that there should be a human face. Government should be considerate. Even if you are going to demolish, at least look, make sure that it's an extreme situation that cannot be helped, and perhaps look at the timing. And it was referring generally to all state governments, including the federal government. Now, the point made by uh, Chief Emmanuel Mwanyang, it's also more or less the same thing. And he's saying that he will approach Governor uh, Sonwulu of Lagos State to ensure, you know, uh, that people's houses are just not pulled down indiscriminately. But he made the point, again, like Mr. Peter B, that pulling down people's houses should not be the priority at this time of hardship and austerity and difficulty. And that in any case, if people disobey the law, he understands. And he doesn't believe that many of the affected persons disobey the law, that, but that he expects people to respect the laws, and which is another major point that he has made there. So if you combine uh, the two statements, in enforcing the law, you must also you know, have a human face, particularly in circumstances like this. He went as far as saying, uh, Oanese Indigo is going to create a trust fund for Igbos in distress and others too who may require help. But if you look at the three speakers, they point again to a certain suspicion 
among many people and that we have seen in the comments. Yes. Namely, although this has not been proven, that people of a particular ethnic stock yes. are the ones being targeted in these demolitions. Now, that, that then makes it also a very sensitive matter. And government must look into it and make sure that there is proper education, there is proper investigation, and there is truly you know, a human face to all of this. You can feel for them. The gentleman that was on the program the other day, he said he lost a, a house of 300 million. Where is he going to start from? This gentleman also has brought a similar uh, Jeremiah, you know, a, a story mm. of uh, woe and mystery yes. about their plight. So these are the different dimensions to it. But the bottom line is that, well, laws exist to be obeyed. Citizens must obey laws. And even when you want to enforce the laws, at least have some human feeling yeah. and respect the rights of the individuals involved. Absolutely. Now, I mean, it was um, Henry. Mr. Henry was talking about the fact that <coughs> it is now the FHA. I mean, we've known that the FHA was involved, but he apparently has said that he was in communication with the FHA for about two years, and they've been paying some contravention bill for, for, and they've been negotiating, they've been in dialogue, and he doesn't understand the reason why one evening they came in and demolished his okay. home. It's a lot of issues here that we are dealing with, so, uh, Rufai. So I think, Mr. Henry, and I feel very sorry for those, their homes are demolished. I think Mr. Henry should make public those correspondence with the FHA yes, and the money they've been paid. he actually paying. did say that he had the documents yeah, right there on and, his And uh, if those buildings had violated laws, maybe they were built on canals or something. They were built on roads, he claims, roads. yes. I think it's the corruption in government we should look at. Yes, at this point. So how do those, in the case of the buildings built on canal, how did they even get there in the first place? How did they get there in the first place? Who were those that collected the monies? I think the government too should be able to investigate. Because in all of this, the government too is also complicit. You cannot say your officials had been going around in circles for corruption and you can't bring them to book. Because buildings just spring up. People will have gotten some clearance from some government authority if call buildings like this can spring up on places that they ought not to be. Yeah. So I think the government should also investigate its own path in all of this. Yes. And the sad reality is also when you now extrapolate to make the argument the government is making, yes, it's very sad to demolish homes, but do you know the dire consequence of not now demolishing the homes where you have drainage and flooding that can even kill more people? So this Arinze's issue, yeah. he says it is not the Lagos state government. I know. This is not the so issue of the water drainage and all now. of that. Okay. I'm talking in general terms now. Because I remember in Anambra State many years ago when Peter Obi was governor, there was a wall that was impeding the road, and I think he demolished it, I remember. Mm. So there are also building codes that will be respected, but when you look at it critically, with the corruption that went on in the first place, where you know these buildings are violating, you know, roads or where we're laid down, and no government authority spoke up in the first place. So that corruption should be tackled, and Absolutely. all the monies that they were given to people. Absolutely, I agree with also, you. Also, please, and we must not just sweep this under the carpet, because that racketeering is still going on. This is the main point. We need to investigate the racketeering, as claimed by Mr. Henry. Well, in another development, the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, near some weekend on Thursday, said plans are on the way to spend 15 billion naira for the construction of a new residence for the Vice President Kashim Shatima. We can disclose this when he appeared before a House of Representatives committee to defend the FCT 61.5 billion naira 2023 supplementary budget. Wiki told the lawmakers that the construction of a new residence for the vice president was approved in 2010 by the Federal Executive Council at the cost of 7 billion naira, but that the project was abandoned. The lawmakers questioned the minister on why he plans to spend such an amount on a building or building an edifice for the vice president. Well, Wiki said that it was to give the vice president a befitting residence all right i mean this is it I, this is what we are facing uh, this is what we are facing 15 billion naira for the residence of the vice president let me just read something back in november president bola Ametinbu had signed you know the uh, 2.17 trillion uh, supplementary budget uh, into law and in that appropriation act the federal government 
allocated 2.5 billion naira to the renovation of the Aguda House as the Vice President's residence. Another 3 billion was earmarked in the 2023 supplementary budget for the renovation of the Vice President's residence in Lagos. The government also earmarked 4 billion for the refurbishing of the presidential residential quarters and an additional $4 billion for the construction of an office complex within the state. I mean, Dr. Abati, please, you have been around <laughs> the government. $15 billion naira, is that what we should be spending? I mean, why is it important to build a new residence, not refurbish, not renovate, build a new residence for the vice president? He does have a place to leave. I, I think we, we keep making this point again and again. That many of our leaders in positions are not sensitive to the feelings of Nigerians. The way uh, Mr. Wiki was reported as, as uh, you know, uh, stated in the newspapers, I mean, many Nigerians will feel scandalized. Absolutely. Because the point is, the Nigerian government is always telling us to make sacrifices, to make sacrifices. But we don't see our leaders making enough sacrifice. Look at the uh, National Assembly members. In considering the uh, appropriation bill that has now been brought by the president, they are more interested in constituency projects, how palliatives can be handed over to them to execute. So this is part of the problem. And we, we keep getting the kind of wrong signaling. Now, what is uh, Mr. Wiki's uh, explanation when he was defending the supplementary budget? Number one, he said that uh, it was the military that built Aguda House. Aguda House is uh, up to now the official residence of the, uh, of the uh, vice, vice president, president of Nigeria. Now, as you pointed out, we have been told that 2.5 billion was earmarked for the renovation of that Aguda House. In the 2023 supplementary budget. And that ha has been passed by uh, the uh, National Assembly. So what happens to that 2.5 billion that has been passed? An additional 2.8 billion to renovate the residence of the vice president in Lagos. So one would think that, okay, if renovation would help to give the place, you know, to make the place more befitting, you can't argue to that. But Mr. Wike is insisting that the way the Vice President of Nigeria can have a befitting residence is for a brand new edifice to be erected. While there may be people who agree with that, many Nigerians will also say this is not the time for that. Absolutely not. And the contractor has increased the cost of this new edifice from 7 billion to 15 billion. I mean, inflation. Over a period of 13 years. Yeah. No, no, we understand. Yeah. We understand to 15 billion uh, naira. And the minister is saying uh, FCT has already provided for 5 billion yeah. to start the work. Okay, we should go and check. When that building was uh, approved in 2010, has some work been done there? Has the uh, contractor collected some money? What is the state of the construction? But he clearly now, said that it was abandoned. It hasn't well, been built. Uh, well, if he says it was, it abandoned, was abandoned, it yes. means something was started. Mm. Okay? It means some, if it's an abandoned project, some processes must have uh, gone into it. Well, the uh, lawmakers should have asked for details in that regard. Why was it abandoned in the first place? Well, subsequent administrations mm. didn't consider it a priority. Thank you. So they just left it at that level. Thank so, you. If the uh, renovation of the building is done, I think this is one of those projects we can keep on hold. And I'm sure that the vice president is not the one pushing for it. I'm sure. It's uh, Minister Wiki pushing for it and saying he will deliver the building by May 2023. There must be some other priorities that he can treat as a matter of urgency. Maybe when the, when the economy improves and uh, Nigerians are in a better place, if, if they like, they can go and build 50 billion structure. But for now, Nigerians say that would be a lot. Now, Minister Wike said something that was even surprising there. 60 million had been earmarked for publicity in the supplementary budget. Now he says he has increased it to 2.8 billion I saw that. for publicity. I saw that. And when the question was asked, he said, no, you have to use money to, to make money. Now, this publicity, what is it placement of adverts? Is it, how is it? 
How will publicity yes, be now. used to make more money? Yes, now. So these are the kind of uh, you know expenditures to you know, that people are people are worried about, and our public officials should just be sensitive to the feelings of Nigerians. Fine. It's to pepper his enemies now. Can't you remember when he said we've given some people newspaper, we didn't give some people. It's uh -huh. to pepper course his enemies uh -huh. now. Uh, Oji, all I'm just going to say is, if we are sensible, if our leaders are sensible, you better cancel that 15 billion and cancel that money to be spent on renovation. Correct. Number 10, Downing Street, the British economy is way bigger than ours. Number 10, Downing Street is 339 years old house. That's where every world leader goes to visit the British. Guess what some prime ministers complain about number 10, Downing It's too small. But they dare not say they want to go and build new Prime Minister's talk, house. Talk of bringing out 15 billion. Talk of bringing 15, 15 billion. billion. Oji, that oh, house you are seeing is 339 years old. It was started in 1682. It was completed in 1684. These guys don't care. They are just, they are wobbia, wobbia, wobbiliki wobbia, wobbiliki wobbia. Eat, 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 eat. All of my dead Nigeria, may God not allow them to eat this country to do. I mean, Rufai, thank what you for bringing out that fact. What, what is, uh, is that if you walk at the altar, ah! you can eat at the altar. But don't eat the altar itself. <laughs> <laughs> eat the altar. Absolutely. No, they don't go eat Nigeria. Amen. Amen. All right, well, this needs to be reviewed, really. We'll take our final story. The honor of Ife, Oba Adeyeye Ogunusi played host to the cast of the reality TV show, The Real Housewives of Lagos, which aired on Showmax. Some of the cast of the reality TV show who visited the King's Palace include Yabo Ojo, Chioma Ikoku, and Tanya Omotayo. Well, during their interaction with The Real Housewives, the only claimed that all women possess the spirit of witchcraft and are manipulative in nature. Pretty much at some point, we all live together as one big happy family. Yes, we will have issues, fights, back and forth, but the world should be a better place, especially for women. You are very powerful. You rule the world. Your power is very limitless. You have so much influence on the society. The, the black people will say witchcraft. Every woman has that witchcraft spirit in them. But, you know, people just probably think it's a negative thing. But uh, witchcraft is all about manipulation. If you know how to manipulate very well, and um, that's the power of a woman. You have natural manipulative spirit, and you should manipulate in a very positive way. Kabi, sorry, sir. Ah. Please, are you saying we are witches? <laughs> ah. <laughs> good witches, good witches, actually, good one. I don't know whether to laugh or Dr. Abati. But me, I'm not manipulative or unhappy. I cannot say this. But he says that they are good witches. You know what a good witch is, a good witch is or a witch is? I uh, mean, I don't agree with the only of you fair on this one. Go ahead. I don't. <laughs> but do you agree with uh, the only Risha that women can be manipulative? Well, I don't know any woman. Oh, like I don't. I'm looking at one woman here. <laughs> I'm a woman. Okay, tell me when. Uh, How? Uh, I mean, yes or no? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know the kind of women. Anyway. I don't know the kind of women that we are dealing with anyway, here. The only officer, <laughs> apart from being a yeah. monarch, is also a spiritual leader. Yes. And you know, he has access to the wisdom of the ancients. I'm sure he was saying that not to denigrate women. Oh, of course. He but was to show fun, how yeah. powerful women are, yeah. how influential women are, you know, and that was why he qualified it and said, oh, good witches. Yes. You know, which means that women are a force for good. Although in the video that I saw, somebody was saying, oh, there are categories of witches, so white witches, mm -hmm. red witches, and black witches. Mm -hmm. Now, it now depends on the category. Uh, and I, I thought in, in the video that I saw, it was a Yabo Ujo that was doing the categorization. Yes. <laughs> but in any case, you know, the thing about our reality is that there is the metaphysical dimension. Right. Professor Sophie Uluwoli, professor of philosophy yeah. of the University of Lagos in, yeah. in our days, yeah. you know, used to talk about all of this as part of the African uh, cosmology. cosmology mm -hmm. You know, uh, so the only definitely knows what you say. Yeah. But I observe something there. Yeah. This real housewife. I, <laughs> 
they dressed to. <laughs> I mean, that's the whole idea. <laughs> that's were, the whole idea. Were, dressed to were, impress. <laughs> they were shining from head to toe as if they were on set. I love it. Well, Dr. Baji, I have to say, what he really was saying was Real that housewives. Witches possess powers, be it good or bad. I'd like to tell your line of they have the power to influence. I don't know about being manipulative. That's all I have to say today. <laughs> oh, Jenica. Yes, no, Dr. Abati. Well, all right. I'd like to uh, thank you both for your great Influential analysis. woman. Absolutely. Powerful woman. Powerful. We do possess that. You are in that. charge. We are always in charge. <laughs> well, okay, thank, thank you, you very Jenica. much. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all next week.